Hello and welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. I have a really quick video for you today because I've just heard some interesting news from Odiphius, the company that publishes Rangers of Shadowdeep, Skyrim Call to Arms, Fallout Factions, and a host of role-playing games, many derived from popular IPs such as Alien, The Lord of the Rings, and John Carter of Mars. They have just announced that they have secured the rights to another hugely influential property, the works of the late, great Terry Pratchett. Here is the press release. We are thrilled to announce that we have secured the rights to produce tabletop games for Terry Pratchett's beloved and internationally best-selling Discworld series. With the blessing of the late Sir Terry's estate, we've got exciting plans to publish tabletop games that honour the humour and satire of the darkly entertaining series. The first Discworld game to be released will be a tabletop role-playing game around the city of Ankh-Morpork and the wider disc, launching as a Kickstarter in late 2024. The Pratchett estate says, Terry had a lifelong affection with role-playing games, and it's an entirely logical path along which we can follow his career, from Dungeon Master to him becoming one of our most celebrated and beloved fantasy authors of all time. We are delighted to be partnering with Modifius, we love their work and we love their ethos and we entirely trust them to get things right. That all sounds pretty good, and while I don't think I would invest in a role-playing game in a Discworld setting, I am very interested to see what else might be in the pipeline. There have been some really good Discworld games from other companies in the past. I always quite fancied picking up the special edition of the Ankh Morpork game by Martin Wallace, and the Witches game seemed like it would be a lot of fun too. However, like with so many games, somehow I just never got around to picking them up. In fact, rather surprisingly, I only have a single Discworld game in my collection, and it's Thud. Thud is a really lovely two-player abstract strategy game, a derivative of sorts of the Viking game Nefertafel and it features delightful playing pieces that are in a similar style to traditional Nefertafel pieces. One player takes on the role of an army of dwarves that has ambushed some trolls, while the other player controls the trolls. That would make them the... Controller. <clears throat> Players can take it in turns to move one piece. Trolls can only move one space, but the nimble dwarves can move as many spaces as they want in a straight line and the idea is to create the necessary formations to capture opposing pieces, with a game continuing until both players agree no further captures are possible. Trolls are big and strong and have two ways to capture dwarves. Firstly, after moving, they will capture all adjacent dwarves. Alternatively, they can make a shove move. To do this, they must form an unbroken line of trolls, and then, instead of a regular move, the front troll in the line is pushed in the back and moves directly forwards as many squares or fewer as there were trolls in the line. This manoeuvre is only possible if it would result in a capture. Dwarves capture trolls using a manoeuvre similar to the shove. They must form a line and then the front dwarf is picked up by all the other dwarves and thrown like a missile to hit a troll directly in front of them. Nobody tosses a dwarf! However, the dwarf must land on the troll space and the distance between the troll and the front dwarf must be less than the total number of dwarves in the line. That means a line of four dwarves could attack a troll up to three spaces away, while a lone dwarf can hurl itself at an immediately adjacent troll. After taking a troll piece, the hurled dwarf takes that troll's position on the board. After a match is over, players add up their points to see who won the battle. The dwarf player scores one point for each dwarf left on the board, while the troll player scores four points for each troll. The difference between the scores is recorded, and then the players switch sides and play again. This is to allow for the fact that the trolls do have an easier time of it than the dwarves. After the second match, the points are recorded again, and an overall winner is determined. And that's it really. There is a variant in the edition of the game I have called Coombe Valley, which involves the dwarves trying to move a rock piece across the board. And there is also a solo puzzle called The King's Game for expert problem solvers to beat. It's a nice little game. I don't get to play it much these days, but it still has a place on my shelf. And it's a good example of how the Discworld series can inspire a wide variety of different styles of game. But what kind of Discworld games would you like to see? Modifius is actually interested to know. They claim that as they are huge fans of the series, they want to do it justice, and they want to hear from true fans to get their opinions on the matter. That's why Modifius have created a survey to gather information that could prove useful as they try to create truly memorable tabletop experiences. The survey is confidential, for internal use at Modifius only, but if you want to include your email address, you will be entered into a prize draw to win one of 10 $100 vouchers to spend with Modifius. 
If you do decide you would like to complete that survey, I'm going to drop a link in the video description below to a Modifius landing page. From there, you can make your opinions known and also sign up for updates regarding forthcoming Discord games. Do note, I am not in any way affiliated with Modifius, I'm including the link for information purposes only. Why don't you share your thoughts in the comments because that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.